Hello everyone, welcome back again to the channel and to a new video. Today we are going to have a look at Stratis. Stratis is a local storage management solution for Linux and it offers several similarities to the BuzzFS file system like snapshots for example. So in this video we are going to install it and we are going to see how it works. Without further ado, let's get going. So here I am on the desktop of Arch Linux. I just made a base install here and I just installed very quickly the GNOME desktop environment. What I'm going to show you in this video is going to work whether you're using a desktop environment or a window manager. So let's go ahead and explore actually a little bit what Stratis is. So I prepared already here the browser. Let me pull it up. And I will go down here to the end of the page to the first release, which was actually in September of 2018. This was the initial stable release for Stratis. So as it says here, Stratis is a Linux local storage management tool that aims to enable easy use of advanced storage features such as thin provisioning, snapshots, and pool-based management and monitoring. So what is actually the difference between Stratis and something like BadRFS, you might ask. So let's go ahead and look at that. Let's go to the frequently asked questions here. And let's have a look at what it says. So let's have a look here. How does Stratis compare to ZFS and BadRFS? So in terms of features, Stratis 1, by the way, this article here refers to Stratis 1, although the newest version of Stratis is now, I believe, 2.2.1 does not yet implement some features that ZFS and BadRFS have, such as RAID and send receive support. Although now Stratis is at version 2, so I'm not sure actually that this article is really up to date. Nevertheless, BadRFS is a file system per se, whereas Stratis is a local storage manager. Now, how does it work and how we can implement this actually in Arch Linux? Well, let's have a look at it. I will leave a link to this website here, which is the Stratis website, and also to this webpage on the Red Hat website, which is exploring in more detail about also the technical aspects of Stratis and how you can also configure it and install it. But we are here on Arch, so let's go ahead and install Stratis and see how it works. So let's minimize the window here and open up our terminal. And let me go full screen here and increase the font size. And the first thing we need to do, we need to install basically the packages we need for Stratis. So to do this, we can type in sudo pacman-s. And the first package is stratis-cli. And the second one is stratis-d. Now, since March of last year of 2019, these two packages are now stable in the main repository in Arch Linux. So we can install them directly with the Pacman package manager. And then we can just hit enter. We need to enter our sudo password and proceed with installation by hitting enter. It's going to take a second to do that. There you go. Now let's clean up the terminal and we can proceed now to enable the Stratis service. So to enable this, we can type in sudo systemctl enable dash dash now and then stratisd.service and hit enter. And there you go, the system is now enabled. We can verify this by typing in system CTL status stratisd.service and hit enter. And you can see it's active and running. So let's exit here by typing Q and cleaning up the terminal. Now let me type in lsblk. And as you can see in this machine, I have my first disk where Arch Linux is installed and I have VDB, which is actually an empty disk. Now Stratis is working actually on block devices. It will not work on partitions. And although it's technically possible, it's not recommended to run actually Stratis on a thin provisioning block device because Stratis itself provides thin provisioning. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm going to install actually Stratis on VDB and then let's see how it works. Now, I recommend you to have the bash-completion package installed in your system here because it's going to help you out also in this case with Stratis command. If you don't have it installed it yet, you can do this by typing in sudo pacman-s bash-completion and you will have then the package installed. Now, let's go ahead and create our Stratis storage pool. Now, Stratis is based on two components pools and file systems, and we need to create them in order. So that means we need to create first the pool for Stratis, 
and then we need to create the file system for Stratis. So let's begin by creating the pool. So let's type in sudo Stratis pool create. Then we give the name of the pool. Well, in my case, I'm going to call mine pool1. And then we need to tell Stratis which block device we want to use. So in our case is slash dev slash VDB. And then I can hit enter. There you go. So the next step is to create a file system on top of this pool. And by default, this is going to use the XFS file system, which is fine with me because XFS provides also already snapshotting capabilities and that's fine for this scenario. So to create the file system here, I will type in sudo stratis fs for file system. You can type also file system if you want. Create and then we define the pool what we just created, so pool1 and then the name of the file system we want to create. In my case, I'm going to type in fs1. You can of course choose another name if you wish to do so and then we can hit enter. It's going to take a second to do that. There you go. Now let's see what happened. Let's type in lsbk. And you can see here straight is create the pool for me. So let's clean up the terminal and I'm going to show you the commands you can use to explore actually your straight is pool. So with the first one, we can check, for example, our pools in the system by typing in straight is pool list. And you can see we have the name here, pool one and the size. We can also use fs list to check the file systems. And here we have the pool name, the file system name, how much space it's used, when it was created, and also the device path, which we're going to use actually afterwards to insert this in the Etsy FS tab file, and also the UUID. Okay, now that we created our Stratis file system, we need to then create a directory in the system where we can mount the pool. So to do this, we can type in sudo mkdir, and I'm going to create a directory in the system called fs1. So I'm going to type in here slash fs1 and hit enter. Need to re-enter my password and the directory is now created. And now what we can do, we can mount basically the device into this directory here. So to do this, we can type in sudo mount slash dev slash stratis slash pool one slash fs1 and the directory is slash fs1 and then we can hit enter. There you go. So the file system is now mounted into the directory and we could also make this permanent by editing our fs tab file. So to do this, let me clean up the terminal and type in sudo vim slash etsy slash fs tab. And I'm going to go here to the last line and type in here a comment and say stratus. And I'm going to type in here slash dev slash stratus slash pool one, our pool, and then fs1, our file system. The mount point is slash fs1. The file system type is xfs. The options are defaults. And the file system checks are zero and zero. And we can then save the file and exit vim. There you go. Now let's go into the directory where the pool is mounted. So let's type in cd slash fs1 and hit enter. Type in ls and we can see the directory is empty. So what I'm going to do here to demonstrate also how we can take snapshots and restore them, I'm going to create some random files in here. So I'm going to type in sudo touch and then file curly brace one dot dot 30 curly brace dot txt. So I'm going to create 30 random text files basically and hit enter. So now if I type in ls, you can see I have my files in here. So now let's go back to the home directory and clean up the terminal and let's create a snapshot of our pool. So to do this, we can type in sudo stratis fs for file system snapshot, then the pool name, which is pool one, then the file system name is fs1. And then we need to create the snapshot name. So I'm going to call mine fs1 dash snapshot and then just hit enter. It's going to take a second to do that. All right, this is done. So we can now mount the snapshot into the mount directory in the system. So to do this, we can type in sudo mount slash dev slash stratis slash pool one slash fs1 dash snapshot. And we're going to mount this under the slash mount directory. 
So our snapshot is now available in the system. Now let's go back into the directory where the storage pool is mounted. So let's type in cd slash fs1 and it enter. And I'll type in again ls. And remember we have our 30 files in there and we took a snapshot of these. Now let's see what happens if we remove these. So let's type in sudo rm-rf. So we are forcing the removal of all the files here. I'm going to type in file and then the asterisk to include all of them. And let's type in now ls, and you can see the files are gone. So what happens now if we want to restore these files from the snapshot? Well, let's go back to the home directory. The first step is to, we need to unmount the directory where the pool is mounted. So we need to type in sudo umount slash fs1, and hit enter. And we need to remove the file system we created first. So we need to type in sudo stratis fs for file system destroy, then the pool name, and the file system name, which was fs1, and then hit enter. There you go. Now, what we need to do, basically, we need to take a snapshot of the snapshot we've done before and name it back fs1. So to do this, we can type in sudo stratis fs snapshot. Our pool is always pool1. The snapshot name is fs1-snapshot. And we want to create a snapshot from this snapshot, and the snapshot is going to be called just fs1. And then we can hit enter. So it's going to take a second to do that. There you go. Now we can remount our pool into the directory. To do this, because we have already that in the fs tab file, we can just type in sudo mount a and hit enter. And now if we go to the fs1 directory again, so let's type in cd slash fs1 and hit enter and type in ls, we have our 30 text files in there. So this is how you can restore a snapshot with Stratis. Now let's go back to the home directory because I would like to show you also how you can remove the snapshot. Now that we restored our data, we can remove also the snapshot if we don't need it anymore. So to remove the snapshot, we need to unmount the mount directory because the snapshot was mounted in there. So to do this, we can type in sudo umount slash mount and hit enter. And then we can delete the snapshot by typing in sudo stratis fs destroy our pool name, which is pool1 always. And then the snapshot name was fs1 dash snapshot and hit enter. And there you go, the snapshot is now deleted. Now, if you would create a new snapshot, you can repeat the process and then you need to mount a snapshot into the mount directory and so on. Now, if you want to remove the pool completely, we can first unmount our fs1 directory by typing in sudo umount fs1 and hit enter. And we can remove the file system that we have in Stratis by typing in sudo stratis fs and then destroy. The pool name is always pool1, and the file system is fs1, and hit enter. And if you want to remove also the pool and basically remove everything, we can type in sudo stratis pool destroy, and then our pool name, which is pool1, and hit enter. There you go. So if we type in again lsblk, we are back to vdb. So this is how Stratis works. It's a fairly simple procedure and it's really a matter of doing it a couple of times and you will be accustomed to it. So Stratis is definitely a nice tool to create snapshots on block devices. And if you try it out, let me know in the comments below how it works for you. And if you have any other question, let me know also in the comments below. I will try to answer you as soon as I can. Don't forget also to check out the links in the video description for more information about Stratis and its technical details. So there you go guys, this is how you can use Stratis on Arch Linux. It's not difficult to set up, but it offers several features, like the snapshotting capabilities we just saw in the video. If you try this out, let me know in the comments below how it works for you. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so by visiting our Patreon website, or you can donate via PayPal to our website as well. Thank you so much for watching the video guys, and I'll see you very soon in the next one.